Hey, what's going on guys? So I'm sure a lot of you know the cylinder for my CRT50 build is damaged and I've been looking through a lot of different options as far as how I'm going to go about fixing it. My first option was going to be to buy a brand new OEM cylinder and sell the, the damaged one as a rebuildable core. But that was until I realized how hard it is to get your hands on a new OEM one. I mean, I ordered a new one like probably four or five months ago and it's been on back order and I figured by now it would have arrived, but it's expected to get here like January of 2019. And obviously I'm not gonna to wanna to wait that long. And then the second option was gonna to be to find a good used cylinder on eBay. It's been really difficult to find a good used OEM cylinder. And of course, it's kind of sketchy buying a used cylinder too on eBay because the exhaust bridge cracks really easily. And of course, I didn't want to go and buy, you know, an already broken cylinder and have two cylinders here that need repair. And so a third option was to fix the cylinder. And I started looking around and there's quite a few companies out there that repair the Nicosil plating, fix all the scratches and nicks and whatnot, get it brand new again. And I decided to go with Power Seal USA. I did a ton of research on them, saw that a lot of people had great things to say, a lot of good reviews out there. And they got back to me right away and it sounds like they know exactly what they're doing. So I am gonna get this cylinder ready to send out to them. And I'm gonna bring you through the process of what you need to do to get a cylinder ready to send out for the replating process. Let's get started. Actually, before I start prepping the cylinder to send it out, I'm gonna show you what kind of damage we're looking at here in the cylinder. So right around the exhaust port, there is some damage here on top. See right there? A pretty good sized chunk out of it, out of the plating. And the exhaust bridge has some wear too. And also on this side of the port, there is some more wear. Take a look at the other side of the cylinder bore. Some more wear and scraping. Nothing too significant. So not really a whole lot of damage. I mean, I might be able to run the cylinder how it is. I definitely wouldn't want to run it like that. I'm actually gonna take a look at this exhaust bridge to the outside of the port. So it's pretty common for the exhaust bridge to crack. Doesn't look like this one is cracked. I'm gonna have to scrape off some of that carbon and take a closer look at it. So not really a whole lot of damage on the cylinder, but it sounds like Power Seal can repair pretty much any kind of damage you can throw at them. So this should be a pretty easy job for them. So before you send out a cylinder, the repair company will want the exhaust valve removed, which I've got over here, pulled that out previously. And the cylinder head studs will need to come out as well. So I'll be using the double nut technique where you lock two nuts against each other on the stud. And that'll enable you to thread the stud out of the cylinder. So I'm just gonna thread one nut on upside down. Thread it down about or pretty much most of the way. And then the next nut just goes on regular. So you just wanna make sure you've got a good chunk of the threads covered. And then you just tighten those two against each other. And then once you loosen up the nut, or once you uh, go left with the nut, the stud will just thread right out. And it's pretty common for the studs to be seized in the cylinder since they're not pulled out very often. So you may have to use some heat or some penetrating lubricant down inside the threads there. Looks like this one is coming out pretty good though. So at this point, the cylinder is completely bare and it's ready to be sent out to power seal. And while you have the power valve apart, it's a great time to clean things up. So I ran these through the ultrasonic cleaner and cleaned them up on the grinder with a scotch Brite wheel. And what works pretty good too is soaking them in carb cleaner and then you can wire brush them or scrape the carbon off and then uh, use a scotch Brite wheel to clean them up, give them that, uh, that nice shine. And one last thing, before you send out the cylinder, you wanna make sure you have a piston to go along with it. I'll be using a Vertex stock size piston. So I'll be sending the piston with the cylinder and Power Seal is gonna match the piston to the cylinder, get everything clearance perfectly and ready to go when it shows up back to me. All right, as soon as I get the cylinder back from Power Seal, I'll give you guys an update, 
show you exactly what kind of work they did to it and I'll be getting it ready to bolt onto this bottom end back here. What's up guys? So it's a few months later, got the cylinder and the piston back. As most of you guys know, I've been through quite a bit lately, but uh, feeling good enough to work on the cylinder again. So it's back from power seal, it looks really good, all ready to go. I'm going to give you a little closer look at the work they did here inside the bore and on the exhaust bridge as well. And then a while back I asked you guys what kind of finish I should do here on the cylinder. So I said uh, should I do like a powder coat, a Cerakote, um, leave it how it is like this, or use a scotch Brite wheel, give it like a nice clean brush finish. And uh, most of you guys on Instagram said to do a scotch Brite finish. So I'm going to bust out the scotch Brite wheel and clean this thing up and get it ready to go on the bottom end back here. All right guys, check this out. This bore looks absolutely perfect. Power Steel did a super good job on it. If you remember from before, there was a nick above the exhaust port. That's all fixed up, ready to go. And the exhaust bridge was actually cracked, although I didn't know that. Didn't see it because all the carbon build up. So they fixed that as well. Bridge looks ready to go. I believe they've got it all clearanced for the piston. And the rest of the bore looks perfect as well. Give you guys a little look here in the exhaust port. The repair work they did on the exhaust bridge looks super good. So very, very happy with the work that Power Seal did. I would definitely recommend them. So before I mentioned that Power Seal was gonna clearance the piston to the cylinder, get all the clearances perfect. And so let me show you what the clearance we're talking about here. So it is basically the piston to cylinder clearance and it should be or the OEM manual specifies 24 to 29 thousandths of an inch. And although I don't really have the proper tools here to actually measure that perfectly, like these little calipers are pretty cheesy. They're not really the, uh, the most accurate, but I figured I'd show you guys what that would look like, how to measure that clearance. I'm gonna measure the piston here about halfway, halfway up the skirt. We're looking at 2.61 inches. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use these two to measure the inside of the bore here. So you can see we're at 26.1 or 2.613, about 2.612 or 13. And you can see these things are not very accurate. And uh, but anyways, that measurement would be about two, or I mean 20 or 30 thousandths of an inch and the spec is 24 to 29. So it falls within that range definitely. All right, before I throw the studs back in and assemble the power valve, I'm gonna clean the cylinder up with some Scotch-Brite. So here I've got a Scotch-Brite wheel that goes on the buffer. This is gonna do the majority of the work and uh, should clean the cylinder up really good. These are available over on my website, primemx.com, and I'll have them linked down below as well. So that is gonna do majority of the work. And then for the tighter areas, like in here, between there, I'll be using a Dremel tool with a similar style wheel on the end. And of course, whenever you're doing any sort of grinding or cleaning on aluminum, you wanna wear a respirator or a dust mask at the very least, and then some eye protection as well. And while I'm going through my cancer treatment, probably not the best idea to be doing this type of work. So I'm gonna have my buddy bust it out for me. So the finish on the cylinder turned out awesome. Really happy with it. There's still some pitting here on the back side of the cylinder from before. A little bit on this side too. Not much we can do about that, but overall, just really stoked with how the cylinder turned out. So I didn't need to use the Dremel tool at all. That scotch Brite wheel fit in pretty much all these areas here and uh, got the cylinder looking really good. Just love that clean, simple look to it. So once again, these Scotch-Brite wheels are available over on my website, primemx.com. So as many of you guys know, right now I'm going through cancer treatment. About a month and a half ago, I was diagnosed with leukemia. Kind of a crappy deal, doing all right with it. Things are getting better. 
and uh, the outlook is pretty good. So with that in mind, I came up with these cancer themed t-shirts. Just says Camp Strong at the front. Has the Primax logo on the neck on the back. So if you want to support your boy Cam here, help me out with medical bills and allow me to continue filming videos like this, you can cop these t-shirts over at primemx.com. So I'll have the link to where you can buy them down below in the description too. I appreciate your support. All right, now it's time to assemble the exhaust valve into the cylinder. So once again, like always, I've got the diagram printed out from Rocky Mountain. This just shows a breakdown of all the parts here. Just make sure I've got all the parts and it's going together correctly. So actually not a whole lot of parts here to consider. Just gotta make sure that the flaps are installed correctly and then um, pop in a new seal here. So I'll just be using this Maxima assembly lube to make sure everything's lubed up before I install it. Just gonna put a little bit of lube here in the cylinder where that seal sits. Press that into place. Throw a little bit of lube inside the seal as well. And then for the exhaust valve flaps, looking at this diagram here, looks like they slide into the cylinder just like this. And then for the shaft, looks like the little pin right here is facing up. So I'm gonna start that into the cylinder or into the seal with that facing up. For the exhaust valve flaps, just gonna feed it through the exhaust port here. I'm working on the left flap right now. Feed it through and hopefully line it up with the shaft here. This can be a little bit tricky. And once it goes into place, you'll definitely feel that it's in the right position. There's like a little slot inside of there that it sits in. So it should look something just like that. And then I can push the shaft through, get it lined up. And then looking through the exhaust port, you can see it's lined up with the hole for the shaft. So I've got the shaft started through the left exhaust flap and if I go any further, it's gonna block me from putting in the right flap. So I'm gonna shove that, uh, that right flap in right now. All right, now I've got both flaps in a place and I should be able to slide the shaft all the way through. Just gotta make sure that pin, this pin right here is still facing towards the top of the cylinder. There we go. So it looks like we've got both of the flaps hooked up to the shaft here. Take a look inside, make sure they're both working. Yep, all looks good. Now the last thing to worry about here is this little stopper plate. That just holds the shaft into place in the cylinder. So it goes right into that small groove in the shaft, there's a little groove down there in the shaft where that plate sits. And then of course, we've got a bolt that holds it in. So I'm actually gonna put Loctite here on this bolt to make sure it stays in place. Just gonna pull on the shaft a little bit, make sure that stopper plate is holding it into place. Yep, looks like it's in there pretty good. So that is gonna be it for assembling the exhaust valve. So the last thing I have to do here is install the cylinder head studs. But before I do that, I'm just gonna sand the top of the cylinder, make sure it's completely flat. I'm just gonna do a light sand here with 220 grit sandpaper on the sanding block. I'm gonna try to work in an even pattern here. Make sure I'm not focusing too much on one area. I'm just gonna look for any dips or uh, uh, low spots in that gasket surface. All right, so after a light sand, gasket surface looks pretty good. Still a little bit of pitting here around the inside. Ain't gonna cause any harm. So I didn't wanna take too much material off the cylinder since that sanding block is made of foam and it's not perfectly flat. I mean, I could have this thing machined to make it perfect, but uh, this will do for now. Now the last thing I have to do for the cylinder here is to thread back in the cylinder head studs. And for some reason, the front two are these two zinc colored ones. So thread these in and the back four are just the silver colored ones. So once again, just gonna lock two nuts against each other here on the stud. And then that will enable me to thread the stud into the cylinder and tighten it down. And of course, since these cylinders or since these studs like to seize up, 
it's always a good idea to put some anti-seize here on the threads. So that way down the road, I'm not gonna have any problem with them seizing up. And these studs don't require a whole lot of torque, only nine foot pounds. All right, everyone, that is gonna wrap up the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if any of you need cylinder repair done, Power Steel USA is the place to go. So this is what they specialize in. They are super good at what they do. They work on two stroke and four stroke cylinders. And if you want more information on what they do, I'll have the link to the website down below in the description box. And their website is powersealusa.com. So I will be seeing you all in the next video where I'll be installing this cylinder onto the bottom end back here. And I've got a really cool surprise for you as well. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and keep it prime.